Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the 1995 Putnam exam. So this is question B4. And our goal is to express the eighth root of a continued fraction. So the continued fraction is 2,207 minus one over 2,207 minus one over 2,207 and so on and so forth. So you can write that as some sort of recursively defined sequence if you want to, but our goal is to express that in the form of a plus b square root of c over d, where a, b, c, and d are all integers. And I think built into this, since the problem says that we should express this in this form and doesn't make any question to the possibility of this expression or if this kind of expression exists, then I think that you can assume that this expression converges to a positive real number. And so, in other words, I think like a bunch of the tricky stuff with convergence is already built into the wording of the problem. Maybe post in the comments if you guys know more about exactly how these things are graded to know what uh, is given and what is not given in this case. Okay, so anyway, let's maybe get to it. And if you wanna try this with some hints first, I didn't write them on the board, but maybe my big hint here is just to practice your factorization. There are some tricky factorization of polynomials that will get you to the end here. Okay, nice. So what I wanna notice here is that if we set x equal to our expression, so like I said, this is gonna be the eighth root of 2,207 minus one over, well, notice that all of the stuff in the denominator right here is exactly our entire expression without the eighth root. So that means all of this can be condensed into x to the eighth power. So that's another way of writing this. So again, notice that all of this right here, because of its infinite continuedness, um, is exactly what's inside of this eighth root. So in other words, this number, whatever it is, must satisfy this algebraic equation. Okay, so now we're gonna take the eighth power of both sides. So if we take the eighth power of both sides, that will give us x to the eighth equals 2207 minus one over x to the eight. Now we can write that as some sort of 16 degree polynomial. And that 16 degree polynomial looks like x to the 16 minus 2207 x to the eight plus one. So now we're just gonna start making good guesses for how to factor this. So since we've got x to the 16 here, we probably need x to the eight, and then some stuff in the middle. We probably need a plus one or maybe a minus one because we need our constant terms to multiply to one. And then we need the same thing for the setup of the companion term. So this is clearly not the factorization of our polynomial, so we'll need some terms in the middle. And we'll work from maybe the simplest form of terms in the middle to more complicated forms. So our first choice would maybe for this to be of the form ax to the fourth and then minus ax to the fourth. So multiplying this out, you'll see that most things cancel and we'll be left with x to the 16 plus two minus a squared x to the eight plus one. So we can determine a by equating the coefficients minus 2,207 and two minus a squared. But that gives us a nice equation, a squared equals 2209. But you can take the square root of this and you'll find that a has to be equal to 47. So that's actually a perfect square, which really tells us that we're probably going in the right direction since this factors so nicely. So that means we can take this thing right here and write it as x to the eighth plus 47 x to the fourth plus one and then x to the eighth minus 47x to the fourth plus one. Now we're gonna play the same game again. So notice there are no real roots to this first polynomial. So no real roots. And that's easy to see because we have two even terms, then plus one, which tells us that we're always above the x-axis. So we have no x-intercepts, which means no real roots. Thus, we're left with just factoring this. 
and we can factor this using the same strategy. So let's go ahead and bring this down. We'll have x to the eighth plus 47x to the fourth plus one. And then we'll guess that this factor is like x to the fourth plus bx squared plus one, and then x to the fourth minus bx squared plus one. Again, being inspired by what we just had on the last. So we can multiply these two polynomials out and we'll see that we get x to the eighth plus two minus b squared x squared plus one leading us to equate the coefficients minus 47 and two minus b squared. But if we do that, that gives us this nice equation, b squared equals 49, which tells us that b equals seven. So in other words, at this moment, we have our polynomial factors as x to the eighth plus 47 x to the fourth plus one times x to the fourth plus seven x squared plus one, and then times x to the fourth minus seven x squared plus one. Next, we'll see that this guy, like we said before, has no real roots. This one similarly has no real roots, so we need to try to factor that last one. So I'll let you guys factor this one using the same trick that we used before, and we'll start the next board with this polynomial fully factored. On the last board, we constructed a polynomial that our number x needed to be a root of. It was this degree 16 polynomial. Then next, we factored the degree 16 polynomial to a degree eight, four, and two quadratic polynomials. I let you guys check that those two quadratic polynomials are the factorization of what we ended up with before. Next, we want to use this kind of thing that which I think is given, and that is that this number should be a positive real number. So let's put that in here. We know that this is a positive real number, but this has no real roots here. This also has no real roots. And then it's not too hard to check that this one right here has no positive roots, which tells us that X must be a root of that leftover quadratic polynomial x squared minus 3x plus 1. Well, really, x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. But that's easy to find just using the quadratic formula. So here we'll have x is equal to negative b, so that'll be 3, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so that'll be the square root of 5 all over 2. Next, we need to decide is this equal to three plus root five over two or three minus root five over two? So let's look at that. So x is either equal to three plus root five over two or x is equal to three minus root five over two. So I wanna point out real quick that we can see that this number is bigger than two. So that's pretty clear because we've got three plus something that's a little bit bigger than two over two. But this number is less than two. And that's also pretty clear because we've got three minus something that's a little bit bigger than two over two. In fact, it's less than one. Next, we can take the expression for x given right here, but write it with one more level of depth in other words, I want to take x and I'll write it as the eighth root of 2207 minus 1 over 2207 minus x to the 8, like that. Notice that if I drop this minus x to the 8, I get something smaller. So that means x is bigger than the eighth root of 2207 minus 1 over 2207. So that's just by dropping this minus x to the eighth here, we created something bigger. We see that that is most definitely bigger than the eighth root of 256. Well, that's pretty obvious, but the eighth root of 256 is equal to two. So that tells us our x is most definitely bigger than two, but if x is bigger than two, then that means that this is the value that we need to take, not the other one. And that's a good place to stop.